Good morning friends. Today I will be talking about the 10 most common mistakes following a rotator cuff repair surgery. I am Dr. Prathmesh Jain and I am an expert in doing rotator cuff repair surgery. And I am doing approximately 300 to 400 rotator cuff repair surgeries in a year. And, in, and when I am following up my patients, I feel that some patients are doing better than the other patients. So today I summarize what are the most common mistakes that a person can do after a rotator cuff repair surgery. The first and the most common mistake that I have seen in most of my patients is they are not giving adequate time and adequate effort on their physiotherapy. A physiotherapy is the cornerstone of success of a rotator cuff repair surgery. If you are not giving adequate time, if you are not giving adequate efforts to the physiotherapy, your results will not be that great. So I request all of you to please devote at least one to one and a half hours per day in your physiotherapy sessions. The second most common mistake that I see is some patients feel shy to go to a physiotherapist and get the physiotherapy done. They keep doing physiotherapy on themselves which is often inadequate. So I strongly suggest you do take a help from a qualified physiotherapist and go to a physiotherapist and do your physiotherapy under a supervision of a qualified physiotherapist. That will improve your results a great lot. The third most common mistake that I have seen is patient is afraid of starting the physiotherapy at the right time. So what happens, I do the surgery, patient went home and he is worried that something will happen if I start moving the shoulder. So even if it is he is instructed, he is not moving his shoulder. So if you delay the range of motion exercises which is prescribed by your orthopedic surgeon, then it is possible that you end up into stiffness of your shoulder and then your shoulder will not move as desired. So it is imperative that you must start your physiotherapy in time as guided by your orthopedic surgeon. The fourth mistake is reverse of this. Occasionally in large and massive cuff tears we need to give rest to some patient before starting a physiotherapy and people start doing physiotherapy too early. So that should not be done. So ideally you should be in close contact with your op operating surgeon and you should take a keen advice on when and how to start the physiotherapy. The fifth common mistake that I see is a communication gap between the surgeon and the patient. Always keep in close contact with your surgeon in whatever means it is possible. A physical follow-up is very good or a telephonic follow-up. You must be in the close contact with your surgeon. Don't ever be lost to follow-up and that will be your guide to a success. The sixth mistake that I have seen is the lack of coordination between the surgeon and the physiotherapist. So I personally advise all my patients to make a good communication between the operating surgeon, the physiotherapist and the patient himself. And a good, com a good communication between the surgeon and the physiotherapist is the cornerstone of a good rehabilitation program. So if, they, if I know what a physiotherapist wants and a physiotherapist know what a surgeon wants, then the recovery and the rehabilitation is very, very smooth. So this must be taken care of. The seventh most common mistake is people forget to strengthen their core exercises before focusing on the shoulder. A shoulder muscle exercises or the shoulder exercises are not useful before starting a core strengthening program. So in all my protocols, we start a core strengthening program first and that usually results in a very good recovery. 
so there is a dedicated video for that core strengthening program and that program i'll strongly recommend all of you to follow before you start actual exercises of your shoulder the eighth most common mistake is not starting the movement of elbow and wrist many a times i have seen patients who develop atrophy develop atrophy and stiffness in the region of elbow and the wrist after the shoulder surgery that is absolutely not acceptable you need to move your wrist and the elbow like this and like this to actually maintain the movement and the range of these joints so that is very important so the, if the surgery of, is of the shoulder there is no point not moving your wrist and elbow so this should always always be taken care of now the ninth point you must always be aware of a disease entity called as rst that is called as a reflex sympathetic dystrophy or it is also called as a complex regional pain syndrome now what it is if after your surgery you start developing redness pain in the forearm and the wrist region increase sweating redness and problem in this particular area then you must consult your operating surgeon because you may be starting to develop a reflex sympathetic dystrophy and which has to be treated accordingly so if you have been operated on your shoulder but if you start developing pain in your forearm and in your wrist you must and must inform your doctor for the same and this if treated early can be treated very nicely if you delay and if the rsd progress to a certain level then it is very difficult to treat the last most common mistake that i usually see in my sportsman friends is they start the sports too early in rotator cuff diseases if you want to go back to your sporting activity sporting levels it may take up to 9 months to for you to actually be back to to the ground for the sport so never hurry to go back to your sport performance and always seek the guidance from your surgeon before you go ahead and join any kind of sports if you have any doubts any prop uh, any confusion regarding these mistakes you can always message us on the comment box thank you